Folks, quick one today. So you may recognize this uh, amp here from uh, an earlier video of mine. It is my headphone amp. Now, these two tubes are actually working at uh, B plus of 250 volts. Uh, so I need to create a supply for that. And uh, I was kind of lazy when I built this thing. And, uh, you know, the, these things are actually kind of an afterthought as I was building it. So I grafted on uh, one of these, which is a uh, 250 volt output uh, transformer. So you put 120 volts in here and then you get about 250 volts out there. Well, you may see that it's dead. So uh, it overheated for some reason. I don't quite understand why, uh, but I'll figure that out at a later date, I guess. Um, but that has left me without my magic eye tubes. So you know, since that power supply for everything else is quite nice, I figured it was kind of lame to just have a, a transformer or something and kind of just throw money at the problem. Uh, so I decided to build a simple little switch mode supply out of uh, salvaged parts. Uh, most of these parts came from a uh, power supply that I found lying by the side of the road. Uh, as actually the power supply of that machine up there. I didn't trust it because it was all smashed up, so I replaced it with a <laughs> new power supply. Anyways, the board provided me a lot of things. Alright, look at that URL. That's what I'm going to be uh, using to show you. It's a very good, very good article. You should read it. It looks like a lot of text and math, but really it's very accessible. Now, I won't go far into how to build a switch mode power supply. There's millions of examples everywhere on the internet. I'll just show you what I did and kind of my experience. Right, so on that website, which I, again, highly recommend that you read instead of listening to me, but anyways, uh, we can see the two states of a switch mode boost converter, also known as how to get high voltage by repeatedly annoying a, an inductor. So let's look at this state here. The only difference between these two states, by the way, is uh, the switch is open and closed. So if the switch is closed, we've got the battery, say 12 volts, and it's going to create a loop of current through that inductor say 1 amp. Now after a while you open up the switch and uh, that inductor is going to want to continue that current of 1 amp at least for some time uh, until the magnetic flux through its coils uh, dissipates. And the only way you can do that short of jumping the gap of this switch, you know, with the spark, the only way to do that is to go through this diode and through the resistor of the load that, you know, this is a, a fake load to ground. And to do that, it's going to have to generate a high voltage. So it's going to shove some, basically, electrons. Well, actually, the electrons are going the other way, but ignore that. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's going to shove some uh, current that way um, and charge up this capacitor and power the load. And then, eventually, the magnetic field will, uh, sorry, the magnetic flux will dissipate through the subductor. Current will go to zero, but the capacitor cannot discharge through this diode. So. Uh, the high voltage remains on the capacitor. Then you close the switch again, start charging up the inductor, and then you open it again, shove some more current down that way. So that's how you get your uh, high voltage from a boost converter. Now, of course, sitting there next to your power supply to push a button all day to pump some more charge through that uh, diode would get old very fast. So, of course, you have a uh, circuit to do it for you. So, uh, in this case, uh, I decided to use a triple five timer, very simple, going at about 8 kilohertz, 50% duty cycle. Um, here's the schematic. Let me refocus the camera. Alrighty. So here's the circuit that I'm using. So again, we have our uh, inductor here, you know, some decoupling stuff, ignore that. Uh, we've got our diode, and taking the place of our switch is a, well, electronic switch, aka MOSFET in this case. Um, and we have our load over here, which is in this case a Nixie tube, which is the point of you know this guy building the circuit. Um, ignored all this stuff. I'll get into that in a second. But anyways, this triple five here is uh, pumping out a square wave, 50% duty cycle, around 8 kilohertz. Um, these values are not going to give you 8 kilohertz. Uh, I'm doing something different. I kind of tune these values to my inductor, kind of by trial and error because I'm lazy today and couldn't be bothered to do the math. So anyways. Got a square wave of 8 kilohertz for this inductor down here. And uh, it's controlling the output of uh, that transistor. And uh, everything's fine. Now, of course, you know, 
these tubes here will give a different load depending on you know what uh, how wide the the uh, little pattern is. Uh, so you can't just have this thing freewheel and make as high a voltage as it wants to. You need to have some sort of feedback, um, you know, to avoid the uh, voltage going, you know, off the scale. Uh, because one of these things that's powerful enough to maintain around 200, 250 volts, when the, uh, the tubes are drawing the most power, will end up making way too much voltage when the tubes are not using a lot of power, thereby damaging the tubes and potentially other bits. So you need to have some feedback. Now. Uh, before I explain how this feedback works, let's explain just very briefly how a triple five works. In short, you've got a capacitor that charges up and discharges in a triangle wave type fashion. Now, the way the pin, the output pin, gets turned on is basically when the capacitor is charged to a point that's two thirds VCC, the pin turns on. When it you know goes back down to below two thirds VCC, it turns off. Now, that reference voltage, two-thirds VCC, is put out on this control pin here, pin 5. And, uh, you know, you could use this for your own circuitry as kind of an output, or, more commonly, you can use it as an input to control uh, what the threshold voltage is for, uh, for that capacitor to, you know, trigger the output. Uh, so, in effect, what this allows you to do is to control the width of the uh, uh, sorry, the amount of time that the output pin is high. So you can imagine if your triangle wave is going like this and your threshold is way up here, you're only going to be uh, on for that short amount of time. However, if you put the threshold very low, that output is going to be on for a much higher uh, amount of time, for, sorry, for a much longer amount of time. So what you can do is you can control that using a transistor. So what you have here is a simple resistor divider uh, with an adjustable uh, pot in the middle there, connected to the gate of an NPN transistor, connected to pin 5, connected to a pull-up resistor of uh, 33K. And what that will allow you to do is, you know, typically uh, the control will be pulled up uh, to a certain value through that 33K. It's not going to be VCC because, you know, there's, there's additional circuitry inside here. Uh, so anyway, it will be pulled up to a voltage. Uh, and when this thing rises high enough to start uh, biasing this NPN transistor, the NPN transistor is going to pull pin 5 closer uh, to, to ground. Right, so here's the block diagram for a uh, triple five. And basically what you need to look at is, uh, let me use my mouse, sorry for everyone who like, doesn't like people touching their screen, <laughs> this is my nice screen. That screen over there is my crappy screen, so I don't mind touching that one. Anyways, uh, so this is the control voltage, and you can see how it's derived. Uh, you've got, you know, R up here, another R down here, another R down here. Um, and that's a resistor divider, and uh, you've got your control voltage here. And you can see that if you tie this thing to different voltages, you know, it'll tend to override these, uh, these resistors here. Um, of course, depending on the specific values of these resistors. So anyways, uh, you've got your threshold coming in here and this comparator. So as you adjust your control voltage, you adjust where the uh, triple five decides to turn its output on or off. So let's look back at the circuit here. All right, so here we are back at the uh, schematic. So let's look at this feedback network here. Uh, what we've got over here is a resistor divider with a little bit of variability with this 1K pot. You've got 220K up here, 470 ohms down here, so you have a uh, slightly variable uh, resistor divider. Uh, slightly variable uh, is required because if you just made this one pot, you know, variable from, you know, basically this entire range, uh, you could accidentally send 220 volts down into your transistor here, which would be bad. Uh, anyways, uh, speaking of this transistor, what we've got here is an NPN transistor connected, uh, the collector of which is connected to pin 5, that control pin from before. Uh, pin 5 was also pulled up through this 33K resistor uh, to 12 volts, or, you know, VCC. Now let's look at what happens here. If the voltage here is low, you know, the output voltage is low, say it's only, uh, I don't know, 50 volts, you're going to get a, low, a correspondingly low voltage here. Uh, determined by, you know, the, uh, the ratios of the resistors. Maybe that low voltage is going to go here, where it's going to do pretty much nothing. Uh, which means that pin 5 is going to be pulled up uh, to this 33K 
uh, resistor. Uh, in effect, uh, sorry, in turn, that's going to mean that the triple five is on longer, uh, just because of how the triple five is is set up. So uh, that'll be on longer. It'll output more power through the diode and all that, and raise the voltage here. Well, eventually, this fo this uh, transistor here will be forward biased, and it will start to pull uh, pin five down. Uh, when that happens, uh, basically the triple five will back off with its uh, pulse width, and uh, it'll allow a little bit less charge to go through here, uh, thereby controlling the voltage in a little feedback loop. So let's uh, see this in action. All right, make sure everything is uh, safe here. Got my voltmeter, so I'm going to power this on. As you can see, it's at 94 volts, and uh, here's the output waveform. So uh, let me save a reference here. And uh, I'm going to take, so this blue pot here is uh, the pot that you saw. So I'm going to tweak that upwards a little bit. So say around that. Well, as you can see, now these pulses are a little bit wider because it's trying to maintain a higher voltage. Uh, by the way, I'm loading this thing down with this uh, resistor here, which is a um, uh, just a dummy load gets quite hot, so I'm going to turn that down now, and you'll be able to see that as I do that. Oh, wrong way. You can turn it down, and there we go. We'll go back to the original. This is about as low as the thing will go. So there we go. We have a nice adjustable thing. It goes all the way up to ridiculous voltages. Well, not too ridiculous. <laughs> the cool thing about switch mode power supplies is that they're rather efficient. You know, these, these active devices over here are perfectly cold, even after, you know, a couple minutes of running. Uh, whereas this resistor here, it's a uh, 20K power resistor, is getting quite hot, um, which is uh, nice. But anyways, uh, so as I was screwing around with this, uh, with this circuit, uh, <laughs> I decided to kind of overbuild it, you know, just to see what would happen. And I used this inductor here, quite a bit bigger, yeah? Uh, and a bigger transistor just to see what would happen. So, you know, I went over here, I have my uh, put uh, uh, sorry, put in charge. <laughs> I have my multimeter on the 1000 volt setting uh, and I went over and flicked the power supply on. Well, I looked down and it said overload, so uh, <laughs> oops. Ah, you know. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, I kind of exceeded the voltage rating of all of my components. The capacitor the uh, transistor I was using at the time, which was only rated to 600 volts, um, uh, blocking, and the diode, actually no, the diode was fine, it was, oh no, no, the diode was overloaded as well, it was a 1000 volt reverse uh, tolerating diode, uh, so that was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, oh, also the uh, resistor that I was using as a bleeder, that was only rated to about 300 volts, so, yeah, nothing exploded. So, of course, I moved on to this thing, which uh, was probably a bad idea, given the uh, nice red text over there. But I charged this thing up to uh, 1,000 volts in a matter of seconds, which made me rather happy. There's the rating. So, uh, you know, this, this supply is uh, not efficient at all, you know, given the uh, feedback system and all that stuff. And triple five is not the best way to drive one of these things. There are dedicated chips that do this, and they're quite cheap and easy to use. So... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is build this up, you know, just so I have a working, uh, you know, amp, because at work I'm not too happy right now because my uh, laptop has a terrible DAC uh, on it, so, well, it has an okay DAC, but the Apple power is terrible, so it can't drive even my uh, normal headphones at, you know, a low volume, it's pretty terrible. Anyways, I want to have this back. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to build a very high power. Uh, boost power supply. Then maybe I'll build a, a flyback, but I really want to use this and, you know, pump out ridiculous voltages. <laughs> Anyways, let's see if uh, it'll work, and then I'll build this up and uh, call it a day. Well, I would call that a fully charged success. I'm going to go shock myself as punishment for saying that. Uh, just kidding. But yeah, now I finally have an adjustable brightness these are supposed to work at uh, 150 volts, but uh, in the interest of saving their life, I, you know, lifetime a bit, I'm going to uh, be happier if I run them at, you know, 
lower. Anyways, it's nice that it's adjustable. Sweet. So you can see it adjusting a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that power consumption at, uh, well, 10 and a bit volts. Nice. Okay, here's the circuit. Not the cleanest, but not too bad either. So uh, I've socketed the important parts so that I can mess around with them later if I decide I need to like change the frequency or something. Anyways, plug that in. Flick the power. Oh, it occurs to me that uh, let that discharge for a second. <laughs> Helps if I have the meter attached. All right, let's try that again. There we go. So here's the voltage adjustment. Let's leave it around eh, that much. Awesome.